Hey guys, Brent here from BrentMailPhotography.com and today we're going to look at the seven things people do wrong when they are photographing portraits when it comes to composition and how they compose their images. So let's jump right into it. So we'll jump into the first error, the biggest problem I see people make when they photographing portraits. All right, this is it. This is cutting off someone's head. So you notice the horizon goes right through my son Wesley's head which isn't the best for when you're photographing portraits. And he's also right in the middle of the frame. Let's have a look at a better shot. So there we go, I've actually just bent down, um, you know, bent my knees, got down lower, and now the horizon's not cutting his head off. So that's the first error I see a lot of people making. Um, here's another one. This is me and my family in San Francisco, and I asked a, asked a tourist to um, take a photo with my camera, and this is what they took. You notice the San Francisco, the Golden Gate Bridge growing out of Wesley's head? <laughs> Not a good thing. So that's the second area I see a lot of people making. Um, objects growing out of people's heads. Not a good thing to do. Um, here's one I took of the kids. Obviously, they don't look too happy. <laughs> Just a snapshot. But you'll notice I haven't got anything growing out of their heads. And I've also got them below the horizon. So that's the second area I see a lot of people making. Here's the third one. This is my friend Dave um, surfing at One Mile Beach, one of our local beaches. And I was photographing with the Fuji X-E2 uh, mirrorless camera. And the, can you guys guess what the problem is over here? He doesn't have enough space to ride into. See on the front of his board here? So all I did was I cropped this image. And I actually removed a few people. And now, because I've cropped in a little closer to the back, he's actually got a little bit of space to move into. That's a much better image than the one before. So give people space to move into, especially if they're moving or there's action. So this is one that I photographed in uh, Vanuatu a couple of years ago. And you see this boy's got space to jump into. I've given him space in front of him. And here's another one of a surfer. This is probably a better crop than the one of my friend Dave because he's got quite a bit of space to actually ride into. Then the next thing I see a lot of people, uh, error that a lot of people making when it comes to portrait photography and composition is when you've got someone looking, give them space to look into also. So Daniela over here, a local model, um, I gave her a little bit of space to look into. So I've given her negative space on the left here. And this is uh, Lara, and she's also got space to look into. So there's a bit of space around her there to look into. So that's another thing that you can uh, think about when you're photographing people. Do they have space to look into? And do they have space to ride or run or jump into? Another error, or this maybe not so much an error, but it's, it's something that you can use to, you know, make more impactful uh, portrait photos is framing your subject. So here I framed uh, this model with this door doorway. I've got it framing so it actually you know draws your eye into the image a little bit. Here's another one framing the model with uh, flowers and foliage. So it actually draws your eye into the model the part that's actually not blurred. All right so what's wrong with this image guys can you guess? Well, how about we crop in? We're getting really close. We show more of the image. So there I've cropped in to show the little girl's eyes. And we can crop in even more, if you like. That's, I think, a more powerful image than the original image over there. So don't be scared to crop in, even if you're chopping part of the head off. Here's another one where I've cropped right in on a model. And I'm only showing, you know, a few parts of her face. Her eye, eyelashes and her, her lips and her nose and um, I'm actually framing it with her hat there. So that's more impactful than if I had photographed a wider angle. All right, so here's another image. And can you guess what I did over here, guys? I used the rule of thirds. So I've left a bunch of space on Joey's um, right over here, and I used the rule of thirds, which the rule of thirds is if you actually chop your image up into uh, thirds uh, from the from the top and from the sides, where the intersecting points intersect over here, those are the focal points, the most interesting points in your image. And I wanted it on Joey's uh, face. 
So you'll see with the original image, that's more powerful because I've got space on the right here. He's in the area where I would naturally go. And it's just a more powerful image because of the rule of thirds. And then the final one is also the rule of thirds, but here's the original image that I photographed at Danso in my studio. And you can see the studio light and the top of the backdrop and the floor. So, you know, I don't have much space to photograph in my studio, but she's right kind of almost in the middle of the image. And to make it more powerful, I used the rule of thirds again. I added negative space on the left here. I added a lot of negative space. So you can see the original image and there's the image that I used for the rule of thirds and I actually put this into the, the Share, Inspire, Create Lounge, the community that uh, Johnny and I started because we've actually got a rule of thirds assignment right now in there and people, all the other members are putting in images uh, that, uh, that revolve around using the rule of thirds. And that's a way more powerful image than the original. So there we go, guys. I've showed you quite a few ways of making your images better. Let's just run through them really quickly again. Okay, not ch chopping heads off. There, that's one. Not having things growing out of heads. That's another one. Leaving some space for people to tra travel into, especially if they are, uh, you know, surfing or, or doing some kind of action sport. Having people, giving people space to look into. There we go. Framing your subject. Cropping in, getting in really close to have a more impactful image. And using the rule of thirds for better composition. There we go, guys. Those are seven tips for making your images so much more powerful when you're photographing portraits and you're composing them. What do you guys think? Please leave me comments below. This is Brent. Have an awesome day.